it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I've got a card for you using Lawn Fawn's Very Rainy Day, Here For You Bear, O Gnome, and Gleeful Gardens. So I've stamped those images out on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink, and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. I'm going to start with my bears and I decided to go with kind of like a medium caramely brown for them today. So I chose my E30s. I'm using E31, E33, E35, and E37. So I'm starting with that E37 and laying in my shadows on the bigger bear. This can be the mama or the daddy, whichever you want it to be. Heck, it can even be a big brother or big sister. Um, but I'm just starting with that darkest shade and adding my shadows wherever I think that they should go. Um, around the sides of the face and on the bottoms of the hands. And also a little shadow under the raincoat on the legs and inner thigh area. And then I'm blending that out with the E35. Just pulling out that E37 a bit so that I get a nice smooth blend. And then I'm going to go in with the E33, and again I'm going to catch the edge of that E35, so I pull the previous color into the next one so that everything is really smoothly blended. And I'm not going to do a full second layer on these images today because these marker shades really do blend fairly well. Uh, it's just the mid-tone to the lightest shade that I want to add a second layer in. So I did use that E35 and E33 one more time. And then for the muzzle, I'm going to use the E30 and then add a bit of shading with the E31. And then just blend that out again with the E30. Then I'm going to take away the E37 for the littler bear, just so I get a very slight variation of tone, and this one will be a tiny bit lighter. So I'm starting with that E35 and doing my shadows in the exact same places since the little bear is facing the front, just like the larger bear. So I'm using that E35 for the shadows, blending out with the E33 for the mid-tone, and then finishing up with that E31 for the lightest. So I'll just continue filling in any remaining areas, and then for the muzzle, I'll use the E31 and the E30. For the rosy cheeks, I'm going to use R20 and R22. Normally I would go a little bit lighter, but since their uh, fur color is a bit darker, I knew it wouldn't show up, so I used the R22 first and blend it out with the R20. Then I wanted to bring in some yellows, so I'm using Y02, Y06, and Y08. And I'm going to give both the bigger bear and the little bear matching rain coat and boot outfits. So I'm starting with the Y08 for the shadows, just a little shadow under the arms and down the sides of the body. Also separating out the pockets and the line where the front of the jacket meets. And then blending that out with the Y06. And then I'll fill in all the rest with the Y02. And this did not leave a lot of contrast, so I am going to go back in and do a second layer on all of the jackets and boots, but I will do that off screen to save you some time. For now, I'm just going to continue with this first layer on the boots, adding the shadows to the inner part of the boots where there would be more shadow and then the highlight on the toe of the boots. I also colored in the buttons on the Bigger Bears jacket with the Y08. And then I'm continuing on to the baby bear's jacket and just making sure to add some shadows where those little lines are drawn on the shoulders, where the hood of his jacket kind of goes behind him. And then I also did the top of the umbrella. Then I'm going to bring in some greens and I wanted them to match with the yellows so I chose yellow greens. I went with YG01, YG03, and YG05. So I'm first laying in some shadow on the top of the umbrella with the YG05, trying to make it look like that fabric dips down a bit on the right hand side. 
and then I'm going to blend that out with the YG03. And I am going to add more detail to this umbrella later on. So this is really just a base coat. Then I'm blending that out with the YG01 for the highlight, making sure that that looks really nice and popped out like the fabric would be catching any light. And then I'm going to do the underside of the umbrella with the same shades, just using that YG05 for the deepest shadow. And then as I get toward the outside of that fabric, I'm using the YG03 and then the YG01. So I'm also going to use the same shades to do my frogs. Normally I wouldn't do that because I would want more contrast in the scene, but like I said, I'm going to be adding more details to that umbrella, so it's going to end up looking totally different. So again, I'm just using the YG05 for the shadows, blending out with the YG03, and then using that YG01 for any highlights. And I'm only using three of those frogs. One of those frogs has a little hair uh, on his mouth, courtesy of Gemma. So I didn't use him, the one in the middle there. So I'm going to move on to my mushroom stems. And for those, I'm using E40 and E41. And just letting the white cardstock show through for the highlight. So it's kind of just an off white shade. And I also did the little dots on the top of the mushroom with those. And then for the rest of the mushroom caps, I'm going to use some reds. And I went with R22, R24, and R29. The background scene of my card is going to end up being pretty dark because I wanted to do kind of like a stormy sky for a thinking of you card. So I wanted these bright pops of color for the actual images to kind of lift that scene and, you know, just not make it look so dismal, you know. So I wanted to have these really vibrant tones with the coloring of the images. So I started with the R29 at the bottom of each mushroom cap, blended out with the R24, and then I'm finishing with the R22. And I did one of the shadows on the left-hand side, or no, sorry, two on the left, and then one I put on the right, just for a little bit of difference there. Um, they're gonna go on different sides of the card. So uh, I just kind of shaded them that way, knowing that where they would end up in the scene. So once that is filled in with the R22, I'm actually going to go back and start adding some details to my umbrella. I needed some time to dry first before I added in these details, and I am going to use the G09 to do that. I wanted to create a plaid pattern, but it is a little bit tricky because the umbrella is drawn in such a way that it's not straight panels of fabric. So you kind of have to curve your lines and I'm not great with adding details to curved lines yet. So I did my best and you know, you, you don't learn if you don't try. So um, I don't regret it, but I definitely think I need a bit more practice at doing straight lines on a curved fabric or surface. Um, but anyway, I did the diagonal lines one direction and then flipped them the other direction to um, create that plaid. And then I'm going to go in between all of those lines with the G28 to add a contrasting darker shade. So if you want to add details to your umbrellas, because a lot of, you know, umbrellas are patterned um, and you don't want to do something a little bit trickier like the plaid, you might want to do like polka dots or even like little flowers or something. I think that would be a lot easier. But for now, I'm going to also take a white gel pen and just continue with that plaid. Um, kind of going in between what is left of the little checks. So I'm doing all one direction and then the opposite direction to finish that off. And I did accidentally go over some of the black lines that were creating the separation of the different panels. 
So I had to grab a black a Memento Tuxedo black marker and just make sure that those lines were still really visible because otherwise it doesn't look much like an umbrella anymore. So just retraced over those lines and um, that finishes off the umbrella. So now I can move on with the rest of the coloring. I'm bringing in T3, T5, and T7 to do the umbrella handle and also the metal shaft. So the handle I did as if it were black and then I just used that T3 for the metal shaft. And then I'm going to also do my puddles and splashes in this gray because I'm going to have a stormy gray sky. So I wanted the puddles to be reflecting the sky that is above. So I took away the T7 and added in the T1. So I'm going to start with the T5 as my darkest and blend that out with the T3. I'm putting my shadows all on the right hand side just so everything is consistent and then I'll have the highlight at the top left. So just filling all of those in and then I'm going to go on to my splashes and I'll go back to my T5 and just add a little bit of shadow. Um, this time I put it on the left. I probably should have put it on the right for <laughs> consistency but it's fine. I don't think you really notice in the end scene that there's much of a difference there. Um, so I just finished with all three of those shades once again. And I know they do look kind of funny here, but once they get in the context of the rest of the scene, I think it does work. So then I'm just going to trim these images out with their matching dyes. For the background, I'm working with a piece of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock and I'm tearing off a long strip of post-it tape to create a mask between the sky and the ground. So I'm just making sure to line that up nice and straight and then I'll fold that around to the back. And then I'm going to come in with some Hickory Smoke Distress Oxide ink. So I'm bringing that in from both sides and the bottom edge. I want to have it a little bit lighter at the top and darker at the bottom and edges. So I'm going to then bring in some black soot and um, just repeat that and just try to stay away from that top area and let that stay light. So I have a contrast between the sky and the ground, even though, like I said, the ground is really just water that is reflecting the sky. So that's why I wanted to Use the same shades. I just want to um, have a little bit of separation with that mask and the way that the colors are blended, um, you know, with the darkest on the outside edges like that. Then I'm going to peel off my mask and reposition it over the ground. And I'm going to wrap that tape around to the back again because it's not going to want to stick because that ink is still wet but having that extra little bit that goes around will hold it in place. And then this time I'm gonna come back to my hickory smoke and bring that in from the top and the two sides. So it'll be almost like a perfect reflection. You know, the darkest is at the top and then on the bottom it'll be darkest at the bottom. Although in the final scene you don't see very much of the ground. There's only just a little sliver of it that ends up showing but it's fine. Um, so I'm going to bring in the black soot once again, just repeating that. Like I said, it's just a bigger surface area at the top because it's the sky. So um, creating that dark stormy sky, like I said, I've done two cards using this uh, Berry Rainy Day stamp set already, and both of them were, you know, more bright they were still rainy scenes but a little bit more of like a bright and cheerful card where this one I wanted to do more of like a um, thinking of you sending compassion type of card for someone who's going through a bit of a rough time so that's why I wanted to go with the darker scene and just kind of reflect that in um, you know in, in the darkness of the sky, but also like the light at the tunnel with the brightness of the images. 
So once that is completely covered, I'm going to grab the Rainy Sky stencil and some Fairy Dust stencil paste. And I'm going to spread that over the sky with a palette knife. So I'm just holding that stencil in place and then spreading that in a thin layer. So um, I kept that tape there as a mask so I would know exactly where to stop. And then if it runs over a little bit of a tape, that tape, it's not a problem. I won't get any raindrops on the ground. So just again, spreading that in a nice thin layer so that it's, a, you know, even consistency all across. And then I can peel that off and you'll get that really beautiful glitter effect, which is going to really be striking against that dark background. So I'll peel off that post-it tape that I'm using for the mask. And you can see I didn't get it lined up perfectly on the right hand side, but that's fine. It's not going to show in the final card anyway. I also cut out two pieces of noble fur cardstock using the slimline grassy hillside borders. Uh, you could probably use the regular length, but I don't have them. Um, and I also use the outside in stitch rectangle stackables to trim down the edges because I'm going to trim down my background panel as well. So I wanted everything to be the same and also have that same stitching detail. And I'm just using my black soot distress oxide ink to darken up the bottom edges because I really wanted, you know, that moody, gloomy look, like I said, as far as the background. I'm going to grab the scrap of the images that I colored and stamp my sentiment down at the bottom of that. I'm stamping I'm here for you in VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And then for the inside of the card, I'm going to use Storm Cloud ink on a Storm Cloud panel. So it is the same ink as the cardstock. And I'm stamping When It Rains, Look for Rainbows, and also a little rainbow from the Here For You Bear stamp set. So now I'm ready to start assembling. I've added some foam tape to the back of my focal panel. So I'll peel off those release papers, line that up in the center of the card, and press that down into place. It's going to give me a nice border of that darker cardstock showing through at the outside edges. And then I'll take my two grassy panels, and I'm going to adhere them so that they're higher on the sides, and then kind of sloping down um, towards the center of the card once they overlap. So just going to adhere those and like I said that little um, little bit of cardstock that showed the white bit of the cardstock that I didn't mask off correctly you can't even see it now because of that grassy border. Now I'm ready to begin adhering my images. I'm going to start with this little puddle here because I wanted it to be on the ground kind of between these little sloping grasses kind of in that little valley area. And I did grab out my EK Success reverse tweezers to just help me position that because I wanted it um, behind those grasses. I needed to make sure that all of those grasses were coming forward in front of it. And then I'll take my bigger bear and I'm going to add that to the scene pretty much in the center of the card, just a little bit to the left so that I have room for the little bear next to him. But before I add that, I'm going to take another one of those puddles and just tuck it under his foot so that I can press him down into place. And then I'm going to add one of those little splash marks over to the left of him as well because that needed to go back behind his hand. Then I'll take the last puddle and add that down in front between the other two. And the baby bear is going to be splashing around in that one. So I'm going to give him a little bit of a tilt to the right just to make him look a little more comical and like he's really having fun, you know, um, tromping through the woods on this rainy day. I'll add another splash mark over to the right and then I'm going to take my mushrooms I'm going to add two on one side and one on the other. So I have the biggest one over on the right and then the smallest one in front of that a little bit. And then the medium size one is going to go over on the left. 
just making sure that I have that positioned exactly where I want it. And then, like I said, the last one will be on the left hand side of the card. And then I have my three little frogs to add. So one is going to go down um, in front of the medium sized mushroom on the left. The jumping frog is going to go over to the right of the little bear, also splashing in that puddle and creating that splash mark behind. And I just adjusted him a little bit so that his um, front leg was tucked behind the grasses rather than on top of it. And then the last little frog is going to be sitting on the tallest mushroom. I wanted something that would give more height to kind of balance out the height of the umbrella. I trimmed down my sentiment with one of the everyday sentiment banners and I'm going to glue that down at the top right of the card. Um, I just shifted that slightly higher. And then all that's left is a bit more glitter so that it matches the glitter of the falling rain. So I took my Stardust Stickles and added a bit to the bottom of each of the puddles and also to the splash marks. And I even put some on the white dots on each of the mushrooms. So that is going to finish up this card for today. I will pick that up so you can see how that catches the light with all of that sparkle and give you another look at the inside. I really hope you guys had fun today. I had such a blast creating this one for you. I hope that if you are having a rough time that this card brought you a little bit of cheer. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button and subscribe. Ring that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. I have everything linked for you in the description bar below if you're interested in any of these products. And here are two extra videos in case you would like to keep watching. Thank you again. I hope you all have an amazing day. Bye-bye.